suspected Islamist militants killed, burned alive 20 in Congo. On July 1st, 20 people were killed in two attacks by suspected Islamists that took place in two neighboring villages in eastern Congo. Alice uh, Kinyaga, whose parents were among the victims in the recent killings, said their throats had been cut. Some villagers were still alive when their homes were set on fire by the attackers. Christoph uh, Muyandero, a local coordinator of the Convention for the Respect of Human Rights, said that the perpetrators were believed to be members of the Allied Democratic Forces, or ADF for short. ADF is an Islamist rebel group in a region that is majority populated by Christians, and the group is considered the deadliest operating in the area. According to the Center for Strategic and International Studies, the ADF released a manifesto in 1997 declaring to the aim of overthrowing the Ugandan government, and later they moved into regions of the Democratic Republic of Congo. Islamism has been a component of the group from its inception, but broader claims, but, excuse me, but broader claims of its goals have been vague, earning them the label rebelling without a cause. The ADF is a recognized affiliate of ISIS and just last, last April renewed its pledge to the new IS leader Abu al-Hussein al-Hashimi al-Qurishi. Okay, so who did they burn alive? Just villagers in East Congo. There were two villages in Eastern Congo that were attacked. Okay, the title is a little bit confusing because it seems like the Islamists who are the ones who were killed. Okay, but they it's like they killed they did the killing. And this like were they is there any um what what was the reason behind this attack? We don't know. They're just it, like, it's suspected that they were behind the killing, just just to be um clear. <sighs> That's what's really difficult. It's not really clear what the specific motivation behind this attack is besides the fact that they are the deadliest islamist group in the region and they moved into a christian majority area of the congo so yeah. varun is saying like i was i agree with what like so varun is saying burning is a uh, how do you say this pro, 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 the prerogative of Allah alone, bizarre. Yeah, that's true. Like we have had Islamic hadith that you can't kill. I think it was Ali, um, Imam Ali, like uh, that said that. Did, oh no, he burned some people alive. But there was a hadith that you shouldn't do that. I don't know who did that, right? But there's a hadith that you can't kill people by burning them, uh, because that's how Allah punishes people, and nobody else is allowed to do that, right? So you like. There's different Islam kills people mainly by chopping up their head, right? That's the Islamic way, but not burning people alive. So this is un Islamic. But what a horrible way to go, also. That is vile. That's disgusting. God damn it. Imagine 20 people being burned alive at this day and age. Like, oh my God. I don't know how many of them were burned alive, but there were people who there, yeah, they were set on their their structures were set on fire while they were still inside. But mm. 20 people were killed in total that we know of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the new? Uh, I, so they pledged allegiance to the leader of ISIS. Like, I don't even know this the new leader of ISIS names. Like, didn't we just like kill the, the second one? So Baghdadi mm -hmm. died. The second one died. As, this, the second one died as well, didn't he? Just recently. Mm -hmm. so this is the third leader. I think like, so. Nobody... Was, was yeah, the third okay. leader who died Al Qureshi? Because that name sounded familiar. Uh, um no i think the, the second one the second one who died was like the second one was the guy in uh that was trying to free a whole bunch of people for syria for in in from jail in syria wasn't that the guy we covered that story right but i guess this is the third guy yeah yeah who, yeah does anybody even care about who the okay apparently isis is still people are still pledging allegiance to the leader of isis i don't know that's still a thing Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I know ISIS is still around, but pledging, like having new franchises, I didn't know they were still expanding. But yeah, man, well, Africa, they're very active in Africa, but like no yeah, one Africa. talks about it. Yeah, because it's Africa. Nobody cares. I know. And um, that's actually why. So, our lovely editor, D, 
who is saying yeah. this is just random violence. She's the one who sent this news to me. And I want to make it like my goal to have at least one story from Africa a week because I think it is oh, wow. exactly important to cover these stories because they get so little coverage. Yeah, Africa is going to be like, you know, the major part of the world, like a big part of the world, like the population where it's like, Africa is growing faster than the rest of the planet. So they're going to be a high percentage of the population, especially the young population. Oh, by the way, we forgot to add, uh, thank Varun for the super chat. Thank you, Varun, for the super yes, chat. Yes, thank you for the super chat, Varun. But I really appreciate having D, like, because, like, people don't care about Africa. So, like, D is, like, give, um, keeping us updated with stuff that is happening. It's very important for us to keep an eye on what's happening. Yeah, exactly. So She's so saying, we care about Africa. And she yes, we do. Thank you, Dee, for focusing on Africa. Yeah, I think I think it's really important. One thing that I found confusing, and I mean, I don't know if they're an immediate answer to this question, but the fact that this Islamist group is called the Allied De Democratic Forces. Like, there doesn't seem oh, to yeah. be anything democratic about you. Well, I uh, yeah, why yeah, why would they have democratic in the name and then pledge allegiance to ISIS? It's, and, and there were Ugandan militia that moved into the Congo. I think, they were, I think it was because they were trying to overthrow the Ugandan government. So they got pushed out and then they just like relocated to Congo. Yeah. It's horrible. Gajan uh, American is saying same here. Gajan yeah. American cares about Africa. <laughs> I think these people are just confused. Like, I mean, demo democracy is not like, it's not like even they're not democratic and pretending to be democratic like it's like it's the seat democ democratic is considered an insult by isis people like it's not like it's not worth even That's pretending to be you know what i mean it's like this is like a bad this is a bad western idea this is shirk this is shirk democracy is actually shirk according to isis people right How? because you're you're putting the rule of man above the rule of allah so you're prioritizing man over allah so it's shirk how is how are you supposed to determine a leader then? Um, well, a shura comes together to determine all the rule of Allah, but the under, but the goal is to figure out what Allah wants, not what the people. I mean, even if what the people want uh, is by extension, you know, Allah is mm. determining here that this is what the, we should get people what they want here. Okay, but the vote, like it's not like rule by the people. They should be ruled by Sharia, not by the people. Obviously, no. But there still not... has to be a way in which the cal the cal caliph is determined. Obviously, not by popular vote. Yeah, I think it's based on like a... what, like a guardian council? No, I mean historically, whoever managed to just take over the Islamic land, like the caliphs were not well, picked. It's based. It's based on force. Like, yeah. I know, but theoretically, wasn't there supposed to be a decision process? No, no. I mean, even the four, the, even if you look at the four first uh, rightly guided ones, right? Each one of them was selected completely differently, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So Abu Bakr was like selected by a group of people, right? Well, that's um, what I was talking about. Like, yeah, but Omar, Omar was picked because from by Abu Bakr. So there was mm. no Shura. Abu Bakr was just like, next guy is Omar. So like, okay. So it wasn't no Shura. And I forgot Osman was, I think, back went back to Shura. Like kind of half Shura, half like pledging allegiance to um, doing what the first two Khalifs did. So kind of was like that. It was more political. Uh, and Ali was kind of like, because his followers kind of forced away, forced him, like kind of pushed like, okay, it needs to be Ali now, come on. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like all four of them were like different. So there's no, there's no one way. Like, it's just like, yeah. And also having a Shura deciding who's the leader, that's not democracy. That's like a, a, a few group of people deciding who the next leader is going to oh, be. No, of course not. It's not yeah. real democracy. It's not at all democracy. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Murtad Skeptic is saying, of fucking course, an ex-Shia would say that. You guys wanted to be Ahlbayt. The elected caliph of Abu Bakr was rejected. <laughs> <laughs> what? It was not rejected. Abu Bakr was like right there. He was the first caliph. 
But like seriously, who thinks like if you actually you know what the Saudis have a point here because Muhammad did say that my the the my community will like the community of Muslims if they have an agreement they will always make the right decision right so if they pick Abu back yeah I don't know there's no uh, you know the more I look into it the more the Shias have no foundations like there's nothing anywhere that suggests Ali should have been the successor of Muhammad. It's all made up. So this is, yeah, I'm becoming more pro Sunni as I <laughs> as I learn about how much the Shia are misrepresenting what actually happened. Mm. All right, yeah. Sorry, Susie. I'm I'm going to the Sunni <laughs> side. <laughs> okay, can we? Um, oh wait, Jordan Abhead is saying. Muhammad didn't care about uh, care to create a process because he didn't care what happened after him. True, actually, it seemed like it. I mean, depends on which narrative you believe in. Because he was trying to. There's a story about him asking for pen and paper, okay, trying to write something, and Aisha and uh, Abu Bakr and everybody taking that away from him, okay, uh, because they knew that he was going to write that Ali needs to be my successor, uh, and they didn't let him, okay. <laughs> Do you, that's the story of a lot of Shias have, okay? Um, when he was sick, he was trying to like write it down. Do you know what the problem with that story is, Susie? Because no, I heard the story. Illiterate. Yeah. The what the point. hell was he going to, the whole, what if Muhammad was going to write down his next, next successor and the Shias are saying that Aisha took that away from him? Muhammad didn't know how to write. This story doesn't make any sense. All right, we got another super chat. Yes, Varun gave us another $2 super chat. Thank you so much. Saying, as an outsider, I think Shia Islam is nep nepotistic versus Sunni Islam. Yes, but that's the point. They're continuing the tradition of Islam being a copy of Judaism. Okay? The whole idea of prophethood going through the, from the father to the son is something that you inherit. The descendants okay? of Abraham. Yeah, so th that tradition was being ended by Sunnis because they wanted to make sure that the, you don't have any competition with Muhammad as the next prophet as a way to, for you to use it against to rebel, to start a rebellion against, against the Islamic Empire. So they made sure that uh, Muhammad is the Khatam al-Anbiya, the last prophet, and so that he doesn't have any son. They even made sure in the Quran that his adopted son is not actually his son. They made that very clear, and the stories killed him. Uh, the, the stories that were written in a way that he died before Muhammad died, just to make sure that there's no competition in prophethood to Muhammad after him, right? Because they wanted to make sure there's nothing, there's no lineage. But but the Shias still managed to go with Muhammad's daughter and his son-in-law and continue, like, so like okay, Oh, fine, they found a way. <laughs> they found a way. Like, okay, the prophethood, the prophethood, it has ended. But we come up with a new thing called the Muhammad. The Muhammad hasn't ended. The Muhammad will continue, right? So we'll just we'll just continue the prophethood through inheritance, like tradition. But we'll just won't call it prophethood. We'll call it the Muhammad. There you go. Problem solved. Rebellion begins, right? Oh, we got another super chat. Wait, Murtad skeptic is saying finally some sense. Armin is seeing the light. <laughs> <laughs> Gaijin American gave us five dollars. Thank you so much. And say Thank Mao you. wrote the name of his successor in his hand, but dang, still usurped him. No, oh, wow. Okay, but is that real? Is he joking? I don't know what he's saying. Okay, it's hard to tell sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> See, it's not just me. If you so, okay, it's other people. Thank you for the super uh, chat. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below. 